Hey everyone, this is Gregor Arturo reporting from the front lines of consciousness. And so what I mean exactly by that is in terms of where is the highest levels of awareness within Gaian consciousness. And I'm not really saying that in an egotistical sense. Whenever you like talk about that sort of thing, it's, it's where it goes. And so I'm talking about it from like, let's say a very scientific standpoint in terms of observing how we are a evolving as a collective species and where that's going um, in terms of our vibrational awareness and one thing that's happening right now is there's massive disillusion happening uh, across the board thought constructs are dissolving within the human psyche it's allowing new room for really wondrous things to come forth such as uh, technologies of abundance and and ideas of abundance what it really means to thrive as a society and so you're seeing that manifest uh, with the dissolution of our political and financial systems and how they're evolving. And there's some really profound ideas out there in terms of how to really transmute and move things forward. Uh, it, it requires going outside the box, outside the norm of, of how to, to really transform our reality. And so one of the ideas uh, I've been bringing forth is... is is really understanding also America and what it represents and what the founding of this country. And the thing is, it was founded on debt. The debt exists today. A lot of people talk about debt forgiveness. And in some ways, there is a beauty in debt forgiveness, but there's also a beauty in actually paying back the debt and staying honorable. And so the Federal Reserve is something that many of us, including myself, have considered to be a horrible organization. In some ways, it is the most honorable organization still left in this country in that it's... Uh, holding its integrity of the debt in which this country was founded upon during the American Revolution. We've never paid back our debt, guys. And so there's also not enough money to pay back the debt. So actually, how do we go about paying back the debt? And the thing is, we want debt forgiveness because we're in like this mindset of scarcity that there's not enough debt to pay it back, but there's enough resources for everything. We can pay back the debt. We can buy this country back. We can do so many things that we wouldn't normally think outside the box. And so like the old paradigm of activism and, and uh, just changing our reality uh, from going head on to head on, fire versus fire, it doesn't really work. And so it, we really require a radical approach to change and evolve our reality. It's interesting what law is in the truest sense it's a process of, of casting spells into full manifestation and when you say legally binding it's binding uh the word spelling is is you're you're sending a spell out there's so much in language that's funny in terms of law of how we actually use these terms what they represent and how we're putting these thought constructs into physical manifestation in our reality and so there's just so many things that have been like slightly I wouldn't say sugar coated, but uh, it's it's not what it seems at, at first. We've gotten used to the terminology, and and same with the political system and business. And how do we work with the systems that already exist here? I feel like I've been like hate free for two years outside my system. One of the last things I had to go through was like my hate with Monsanto and what they were doing with destroying our food system. And it's affecting so many people. It's affecting the health of my family, people I love. Uh, it's destroying our energetic system that we rely on to survive and hopefully eventually thrive on this planet. Well, I, I've since let go of that. And where I've moved to is, is the potential emotion of me sitting in Monsanto's board, boardroom and talking to the executives and transforming their mindsets. There's been, I've had opportunities to work with Nassim Harami at the Residence Project and I've been apprehensive as well as other opportunities. And it's because of where people are at in terms of their consciousness and how are they really aligned to the collective. And I'm shifting that myself now because I'm seeing myself as the collective. And there are these other great virtuosos, inventors, physicists, scientists. And there is this like, ego battle that goes on in that sector and always has and like it's shifting out of that in terms of like hey guys we all have ideas there's so many wonderful solutions in the field of permaculture moving forward right now every component exists it seems like from my meditations and uh planting of siege of moving forth 
uh, ideas of system theory at a global scale in terms of how we shift the world. And all those components already exist. There's things I've been designing theoretically, and then boom, there it is. There's a whole team working on it. They've been working on it for years, and that's that's where it's been flowing. And it's like I manifested in my reality, but the thing is it already exists. I'm pulling it into my reality, and that's where we're co-creating because we're all doing it. It's a huge paradox when I'm saying I'm bringing it into reality because I am and I'm not, and, and we are and we're not. It's... Language gets so lost in terms of the potentials because of how we use pronouns to separate the self. When the I, the you, the we, uh, it's all us. And like, I really like in French how there's on, which is um, it's usually used as a plural, but it's more of like a plural singular. Instead of we are, it's like one is. One is truth. And there's a beauty in that, guys. There's such a beauty in that. And so these ideas are unfolding. Is like, it's all here. The dominoes are falling. They're moving forward. There's so many people waking up to these simple truths about reality that at this moment, it just requires patience and diligence and faith. And for you to make a conscious decision to choose to align to your path and follow it, follow it to the end of the earth. If it takes a little while to be uncomfortable, then then so do it. But that's your choice to be uncomfortable. You're going to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation to make this world move forward. And you don't necessarily have to be uncomfortable, but the thing is to embrace the uncomfortable moments because one thing even with American culture, and there's there's significance in America. It's become a, a, a beacon, a reflection for the whole world. The whole world's watching our election right now and seeing how it's unfolding. And the thing to like really like grasp is <sighs> things can be hard, things can be easy. When you accept all the hard things for what they are, it becomes easy. And it's all easy. You know, when you accept losses in life, when you accept trauma or curveballs, it's all easy because you move through it like that. It just poof, you just pop through it. And like, as we all start to attune to the uh, chaos or accept the chaos, and we find the inner peace among the chaos, that's where the chaos starts to, to calm down. It starts to come back to equilibrium. We follow the path of least resistance. When you let go and you go with the flow with everything else around you in creation, that's when you're flowing to the path of least resistance. You're going to go where the universe puts you in accordance because it's, the universe is a pressure system. When I'm studying physics and particular dynamics, it's all pressure systems. Pressure systems of sound, of light, um, of unpolarized light, dark matter, whatever you want to call it, scalar waves. There's so many names. I usually actually just say chi. It's a one-dimensional waveform. I can go on and on about that, but it's it's all different types of you know geometric distributions of and and fa geometric and phasing distributions of pressure, and some of the highest levels of those distribution fields of energy is within. I mean, it's all consciousness, but it manifests more as what we see as consciousness within ourselves, and, and consciousness is a pressure system. You choose to put yourself in an environment, there's a good chance you're going to become reflective of that environment. But if you're very, like, solid and closed off to the world, then you're going to maintain some integrity, but it's also being closed off. There's a trade-off to all of it when you're, like, hard and numb versus open and loving. And... Uh, we're shifting into an awareness to where we are seeing ourselves as a collective. There's a difference between like philosophically and ideologically and metaphysically uh, saying, talking about we are one. And there's a difference when you actually live it, when it's actually integrated into your psyche and awareness, I'd say full time. And I still don't know anyone who's it's full time. I mean, in, in essence, there's a beauty to that of like falling into the matrix of falling into the game of, of, of forgetting, just allowing yourself to collapse into the story. 
However, when you maintain the awareness of the oneness of that truth, um, the compassion allows us to move forward into the bliss of the now, in that with the path of least resistance, you're going to the flow of nature as it restores to equilibrium. It always wants to go to equilibrium. It is intent that forces it out of equilibrium. And so when I spoke about in my previous video about the Big Bang being moved forward by creativity, by curiosity, by awe, that's, that's the will coming and exploring creation and pulling it from a state of balance. And there's a way to explore that balance. It's like if you're going to explore, explore creation, you, you have a buddy who stands on the other end of the teeter-totter while you guys balance holding, you know, and juggling apples, you know, and keeping that balance, but you're going through these creation of, of these extreme experiences. And, but if there's not the balance, it's where chaos unfolds and you get natural disasters um, and, and political fiascos and the poor and the rich and those divides and so forth. But there's a way to explore creation responsibly if you so choose. And responsibly isn't even necessarily the right word. It's, it's in harmony if you so choose. Chaos is acceptable. Order is acceptable. It's all acceptable. You can go whatever flow you want. I personally am going for joy and peace. It sounds righteously delicious on so many levels. But that's just my preference. Where's your preference? Where do you want to go? And so, like, really shifting that into the, the norm of your being. Let it be you. Let it live in you. And let it be expressed through you. Like, be joy every moment, guys. Like, right now, sit with yourself and just be like, what does it feel like for everything to be joy? Everything. For everyone to be happy. How does that make you feel? Because it's such a wondrous feeling that it can permeate not only you, but the creation because it's you this is all you this is this is everything you could have imagined because this is what you're imagining this is your exploration and if we choose to be in a world of scarcity we're going to self-sabotage everything we do to try to get out of it so instead of trying let's do it let's do abundance let us thrive let us believe in what we want to believe in. Psychic phenomena comes out of letting go of things that we feel aren't possible. It's all possible, guys. Everything's possible. We create constructs left and right that block us. That is the danger of science. This fact creates a wall. Let us guide us into a world of pure potential. Because the essence of science is mechanics to that system of manifestation. That's really the only true facts. That shit's still modular, trust me. Like, perception throws some curveballs in this game all the time. And, like, quantum physics is just touching on it, you know. We're just seeing some small-scale effects. There's some serious mechanics going on here. When you start to, like, really take that and put it into motion, like, what you can create is off the chain. I got an eight-year thought seed going right now. It's juicy. It's it's flowing into some, like, dynamic, like... Oh, it's... I, thank you, all. Thank you. Gratitude is, like, so profoundly good lately. It's like ice cream in every moment. I can't even begin to like fully. I, I, I'm trying with language right now, and I'm pretty. You know, you know how articulate I can get. And like, <sighs> cheers! Thank you, water, for existing. Like you do. <sighs> so maybe I'll just end it on that and let that sit and like nourish and and flow into some facets of your being and. See what you can let go of. See if what thought is like blocked your perception from seeing something that is stupendous. Like open your mind up to something stupendous. Let there be room for miracles. 
Because there can be a shockwave in consciousness in any moment that just rips our psyches into absolute ecstasy to usher in an age of joy, of where we respect the common man and woman among each other, where food and water and shelter and energy and clothing, it's all taken care of. Those are bare necessities. We don't have to think about that. That's done. Check off the list, okay? We got other things to worry about. Like what color tutu should we wear to Burning Man next year? You know, ideas like that. Let the creative being explore. Until then, we're caught up in the in, in the games of survival. And we can get past that really fast, really quickly, if we're willing. And then we can explore reality how we want. Because we have all of creation to explore creation. <sighs> A lot of patience, guys. A lot of patience. And trust me, I am on the Doer Manifestation bandwagon right now, and I'm going to keep chugging along. So thank you. Blessings. Enjoy your creation. You've been doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you so much.